everyone, today I will be presenting you the MRI technique called pseudo-continuous arterial spin labeling. Pseudo-continuous arterial spin labeling is a branch of arterial spin labeling, so I will first be giving information about that. Arterial spin labeling is a widely popular MRI technique, and it is commonly used in research and clinical studies. Arterial spin labeling is a method which is based on the subtraction of a control image by a labeled image. It doesn't require the patients to be injected by external contrast material, so it is called a non-invasive technique. There are four different ASL methods, as you can see. To perform ASL, we first magnetically tag water located in arterial blood by pulses. Then, a control image is taken before the tagged blood reaches to the region we are interested in imaging. When the tagged blood arrives to the tissue, the targeted tissue and blood exchange magnetization. Later, we image the ma tagged region. Finally, we subtract the tagged image from the control image. Here is an image which shows the arterial spin labeling process. Now, I will be giving you brief information about pseudo-continuous arterial spin labeling. It was discovered in 2008 by a group of scientists led by Dr. Wei Ying Dai. Uh, it is the pr preferred ASL method as of today. It is a mixture of CASL, which is continuous arterial spin labeling, and PASL, which is pulsed arterial spin labeling. PCS PCASL is also known as pulsed continuous arterial spin labeling. As PCASL is a mixture of CASL and PASL, I will be briefly talking about these methods. CASL is the first ASL method discovered. Uh, the RF wave is applied continuously alongside with an imaging gradient. As the RF wave is applied continuously, it is hard to implement on clinical scanners. The inverted blood reduces the signal intensity, which allows us to see the difference. The magnetization transfer phenomenon negatively affects the resulting image. Uh, due to its disadvantages, it was discontinued in the 1990s. After talking about CASL, I will now be talking about PASL. Uh, conversely to CASL, in PASL, we apply a pulsed RF wave. Uh, due to its nature, it can be easily implemented on clinical scanners. It has lower SNR compared to CASL. There, uh, the PASL methods include Epistar, PICOR, and FAIR, but the method that should be used depends on blood flow to the area, which means how the blood flows to the area. As we now know about the other ASL methods, we can now compare them to PCASL. PCASL labels more efficiently than CASL. Compared to PASL, PCASL has higher SNR, which gives us better images. PCASL uses very short RF pulses, which resembles the long RF wave, a long continuous RF wave used in CASL. Like PASL, it is compatible with modern clinical scanners. Handing RF pulses instead of rectangular RF pulses are used to avoid aliasing of labeling planes. Uh, by the way, in PCASL, the labeling plane is near to the region of interest. On the right side, you can see the two labeling sequences that is used in PCASL. The sequence marked with A is the labeling pulse sequence, while the sequence marked with B is the control pulse sequence. It could be seen that the slice selection gradient is unbalanced in the labeling pulse sequence, while it is balanced in the control pulse sequence. Therefore, a phase offset is introduced by the labeling sequence, and later the control sequence removes it. The pulses you see on the right are actually really close to each other, and are applied in large quantities. CASL uses a spin labeling method called adiabatic inversion, and PCASL aims to replicate this method. These pulse sequences allow PCASL to do so without having the disadvantages of CASL. PCASL has many applications. It is used by doctors and researchers on their findings. It is also used in detecting cerebrovascular diseases, epilepsy, dementia, cognitive disorders, and vascular malformations. Finally, we see sample images of PCASL compared with other, other methods such as STAR and PASL. Due to its higher SNR value, PCASL can view images better. And here are my references. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.